Nailing your exposure has a tremendous improvement in image quality on the RED Komodo. The trick is to be able to do it quickly and efficiently. To swiftly balance the competing trade-offs of noise and highlight clipping, RED cameras have proprietary indicators for the task, commonly known as the traffic lights and goalposts. Unlike the histogram and other exposure tools, they're not affected by ISO or look settings, but instead represent the raw image data, giving you an invaluable insight into the sensor's performance for the particular lighting condition. This video, I will take a closer look at how to properly use these proprietary tools to help you to quickly and efficiently achieve optimal exposure under any lighting conditions every time. I feel the need, the need for speed. The goalposts historically were depicted as vertical bars either side of the histogram. As you would usually try to avoid hitting either side of the graph, the vertical bars began to be referred to as goalposts. On the new RED software, this has changed to three vertical bars that have been separated from the histogram but the name and its primary functionality has persisted. Now, instead of just depicting noise and highlight clipping for all the pixels, they're separated into three primary color channels, red, green, and blue. The goalposts depict the fractions of pixels that have either become clipped or near the capabilities of the camera to discern texture from noise, depending on if they're going up or down. Up is for clipping, down is for noise. Neutral for seemingly optimal levels, or if you will, a perfect balance. But this actually isn't always true. A complete bar one way, up or down, represents 25% of all the subsequent color pixels. So if all the bars went all the way up or down, that would comprise 25% of all the pixels in the image clipping, or in noise, respectively. Red themselves state that for noise, it is acceptable to go as far as halfway down on all three goalposts, meaning with 12.5% of the entire image being in noise will still produce acceptable image quality or noise level. But even the tiniest amount of bars going up for highlight clipping can spell disaster for the entire footage, depending where the clipping is occurring. Again, if there's still anyone doubting the appropriate exposure strategy, this clearly reinforces the law of only giving the sensor as much light as necessary or erring on the side of shadow. ETTR, exposure to the right, would run a very high risk of clipping highlights and producing an acceptable and unrecoverable image quality, as reaffirmed by RED's own instructions on how to use the goal posts. Remembering that sometimes you have to purposely set things darker to cushion any hot spots that may appear during capture, especially with camera movement. Things to watch out for are reflective surfaces, fast motion, and of course, bright lights. Therefore, in many situations, optimal exposure will not be perfectly balanced goalposts, but goalposts that slightly go into the shadows, so they are giving a cushion or protection for any exposure changes that could happen during capture that might otherwise cause the highlights to clip. This is Sparta! As I went over in my exposure strategy for the Red Komodo video that I encourage you to check out if you haven't already and don't forget to give some love to the like button and subscribe to the channel for unlimited awesomeness and general well-being. In a nutshell, the reason for earing on the side of shadow for video is because noise can be cleaned up in post and shadows recovered with minimum quality lost, while highlight clipping, once it has occurred during capture, is unrecoverable in post and is much less pleasing on the digital sensor, whereby celluloid can make clipping cinematic, digital clipping is often abrupt and video-esque, so it should be, and is, avoided at all costs. Not bad. To this end, RED has also added what is known as traffic lights. A quite obvious name for depicting three color channel lights, although they don't correlate to traffic lights exactly. In total, there's six lights, three for noise and three for highlight clipping. They represent only 2% of the color channel being clipped or in noise. 
For noise, this might not be so important unless you're doing some kind of high-end CGI work. But for highlight clipping, the traffic lights are an invaluable tool, as especially for, say, the red color channel, no pun intended, which can easily become clipped from the skin tone, it is important to keep an eye on the red highlight clipping traffic light to make sure that it's not happening. Because it's such a small percentage of the entire pixels in the frame, something like 0.66666666% uh, percent, it might not be visible on the goalpost. And you definitely don't want pale skin tones from a clipped red channel. <laughs> Again, this is another reason for you to err on the side of shadow and to avoid ETTR like the plague, especially for dynamic footage, like an outdoor daytime scene with lots of movement. You can easily clip the red out of the skin tones if you're not careful or not using the right exposure strategy. You can see how the right exposure strategy is intended through the functionality of the proprietary exposure tools and their user guides. It's all made to be coherent and simple and accessible. This is all worked out by RED to be done with fast precision. They understand you will be setting your exposure countless times over during a shoot. So the process needs to be efficient and cohesive. So you're able to manually achieve optimal exposure fast and accurately. However, you have to conform to the way the camera works and use the RGB goalpost and traffic lights to achieve that end and not to accommodate your own version or vision of how the camera should work. I bet this one fact is the number one reason people get rid or bag on the red Komodo. They don't understand it and they don't like it because they don't know how to properly use it. But this all doesn't just apply to the Komodo. All red cameras, past, present, and future, use these proprietary tools and follow the same exposure principles. Refusing to learn because you think you already know how, and it's the camera, not you, that's not performing, are the perfect makings of a Groundhog Day syndrome, not to mention probably heavy on the pocketbook. Don't drive angry. Don't drive angry. The reality is technology is changing. The video camera industry has come leaps and bounds in the last couple of years alone. We must ever be learning and adapting to new technological advancements or risk becoming obsolete. With a Some might hate this and just want a camera that gets on with it. But for others like myself, this is the juice. This is the gray area that you can push things to the limit, where you can set yourself apart as the DP with intrinsic knowledge of red cinema cameras, exposure strategy, and the red Komodo which in combination will give you image quality that far exceeds any point and shoot system, period. The functionality of the goalposts and traffic lights are easy to understand, like a game of chess or poker, but to work them in your favor under any situation, pulling out every ounce of image quality and maybe even those beautiful imperfections that the red Komodo can produce. Now, that's a pursuit of a lifetime. At the end of the day, the goalposts and traffic lights, as far as I know, can only be found on the red cinema cameras, offering an ingenious way to quickly assess and optimally balance the competing factors of noise and highlight clipping. So you can, with ease, manually optimize your exposure and image quality every time, anytime. You got the juice now, man.